Hey everybody, it is uh, gin and spin time. I actually uh, have some gin tonight, so uh, we're official. And we are in the bird's room, because uh, my kids are watching TV in the other room. So you want to say hi to the bird? He's going to think that this uh, phone with the uh, light on it is going to like be an alien. Hi Merlin. Hi. There he is. He makes loud, horrible noises. So anyway, this may have to be a shorter one. But uh, let me get the camera where you can actually see. Oh, first off, I have a new accelerator for my uh, polywog. If you'd watched my previous videos, you know that I used to have the Golden Whirl ex uh, accelerator. And now I have the wooden one. And you might be wondering, if I had the Golden Whirl one, why do I have a wooden one now? Well, that's a good question. Apparently, uh, Spinolution, after, like, well, one, I don't, uh, like, pretty soon, I was, like, the first person, I think, that ordered one. Pretty soon after, I'm going to try to get the camera rigged while I'm talking. Pretty soon after they put out the Golden Whirl Accelerator ones, they started realizing that while the Golden Whirl technology was great for, like, literally everything else, it was not so good on the accelerator because the Golden Whirl accelerator was small, whereas the wooden that I have now, the wooden one, is larger. And so having the small gears, and if you look at my review video of the, uh, of the accelerator with the Golden Whirl, I'm complaining that I don't like using the 12-ounce upgrade on the accelerator. And it made sense because the accelerator is for doing smaller, you know, smaller yarns, whereas the 12-ounce upgrade is for doing bigger yarns. So, yeah, they were kind of, you know, not the same thing. But it would have been nice to have had some people, it doesn't bother me, like the extra height the accelerator gives the polywog. But um, having the small little circle for the Golden Whirl one um, was putting all the gears and the belts uh, at like weird angles. So they weren't, that's why they were kind of grinding, you can see in my other video. So, Spinolution, being awesome, put out an announcement saying that, uh, you know, this was a problem and they weren't happy with it. So that anybody, dealer or otherwise, had bought a Golden Whirl accelerator. If you wanted to send it back, they would pay for shipping both ways because they're awesome and uh, send you the wooden one, which nobody had ever had a problem with. <laughs> so they'd just gotten a little overly excited with sticking the Golden Whirl on everything. So now my 12 ounce upgrade still has the Golden Whirl on the back, which is um, like the technology that lets the Spinolution wheels have the uh, fastest spinning speeds, which is really good for short fiber links, like cotton or flax, that sort of thing, or really thin spinning. But they, and that is standard on absolutely everything except for the accelerator. The accelerator is the only thing that they went back on. So anyhow, without further ado, and before my kids get grumpy on me, let me commence the spinning. So what are we spinning tonight? I'm working on, let's see if I can get this where you can actually see the wheel. Um, this is the lovely uh, blue-faced Lester fiber from, uh, it was actually, it's the last remnants of my last collection, the Andrew Wyeth paintings, and this one was one of my absolute favorites. It's so pretty. It's called Floodplain, and like I said, Andrew Wyeth is one of my favorite painters, and uh, this one was inspired by one of his paintings called Floodplain. So anyhow, and if you have any questions, like I said, of course, please uh, feel free to comment. And I will try to answer them, but uh, let's see. Okay, so I think I got the wheel where you can actually see it. And this is my little polywog, and I've been spinning this. It's going to be a two-ply. Like I said, it's the same yarn that's on my uh, my site, so let's see. There you go. It's the same yarn that's on my site. Uh, hint, hint. Uh, this one is already sold, the blue one, but there's a lovely... Uh, orangey one, the pumpkins one, and then a l pretty gray and like kind of tanny taupey colored one. And there's one each left of those, and they are about to be on sale tomorrow. So you heard it here first. Um, and I think they're going to be 40% off. Like I said, I have one of each, and uh, those are going to be going on sale tomorrow. They'll be marked at 20% off, and then you can stack that with the 20% off coupon on my site. So, if you are all about some BFL wool, um, and you want some, like I said, tomorrow, because I'm getting ready for my new collection coming out, so I always kind of, you know, a few weeks before, do a good sale to clear that out. So, you've heard it here before anybody else has, 
that uh, I, I don't have too much left that's actually mine on the side. I've got the one bulky weight Rushmore one, which is really pretty, named at, uh, after the Wes Anderson film. And so that one will be on sale. And then the two uh, other Andrew Wyeth ones that were the blue-faced Lester, the orangey one and the gray taupey one. And that's it. So three people can grab some yarn on sale. And what I wanted to talk about with the um, the spinning here is you may notice with the, if you usually see me spin the merino braids, I do a lot more pre-drafting. And as you see, I don't know, at least with me, my opinion is the blue face Lester does it. I mean, you can, you can kind of pre-draft it. I mean, that's like a nice long strip. Um, but it doesn't, I don't prefer pre-drafting it like I do the merino. What I like to do, and this is a big blob, but I kind of pull off a manageable blob <laughs> like this in my hand. And uh, you can just, because the blue face Lester, now of course the bird's going to be grumpy, is um, it's got a nice long fiber length. Um, here, I can show you. See how, uh, see how long and it's almost like hair. It, it's much more like hair, like human hair or dog hair almost, I feel like. I mean, uh, look how thin that can get. And that's why it's so good for, like, uh, thin spinning and why I like it so much. It also has, you know, similar to hair, kind of that, like, luster to it that uh, the Merino's more kind of matte finish. Um, so anyhow, what I like to do is uh, just get kind of a blob of it and then get it going, and it's so easy. I like to do the long pull method, but it literally just pulls from itself. So I think if you can, and this is kind of like going with its nature, it's the same thing I've learned with my hair, is if you fight my hair and try to make it look respectable, uh, it doesn't do so well. But if you just let it be, <laughs> it does much better. So same thing with the uh, BFL. I kind of just let it uh, do what it wants to do, which is be long and thin, and I like doing this long draw, you know, kind of a slow pullback method on it, and just let it all feed out of the same little uh, piece in my hand, and I think that'll work much better than if you're trying to fight it and, like, make it pre-draft and make it behave like Merino, because it's not Merino. It's like the opposite of Merino, so... Uh, Instead of trying to make it be something it's not, I prefer spinning it this way. And I actually think it's an easier spin because instead of having to sit here and like pre-draft everything and then like do the strips that are already pre-drafted, um, like I said, you, and if you're switching colors, you can see like that one's kind of light blue. If I wanted to, oh, here you go. This one's got good color variation. I just kind of pull up, see we got like lighter on this end and like darker on this end, so... And this is a little bit on my like spinning by feel method and how I get some of my good color variations is I'll do like dark for a while. And then if you want some light, you can literally just flip it over <laughs> and then connect this end on there. And then you can get some light. All right, so that's probably all the time I have at the moment. So anybody have any questions, questions, comments from the peanut gallery? All right, well, I hope that, uh, like I said, you, here, let me get this down where you can see it better. Like I said, this is the, uh, oh, the single ply, and it's going to end up double plied, but you can see the pretty, like I said, this one was just absolutely beautiful. The grays and the orange are equally pretty, um, with the different colors changing, and it's the same sort of color palette, and you can see, you know, it's pretty thin. It's like a uh, mean green weight, and then it'll get two plied together. And like I said, the polywog with the, uh, and my hair's in the way, the wooden uh, accelerator, which I have to admit I'm much happier with. Uh, do you knit? Yes, I do. <laughs> I do knit. That's actually, that was the original rabbit hole I fell down with um <laughs> with yarn was knitting i learned to knit in college and uh, i'm a really loose knitter uh especially when i started so like it just kept getting bigger and bigger <laughs> so that's how uh that's how i started was with the knitting and uh I, I crochet like just enough to be dangerous there are free patterns for knitting and crochet and some like tips on like knitting with hand spun yarn because everybody seems to think that that's some sort of weird thing that is different <laughs> on my website. How long have you spun? I have been spinning. Boy, that's a good question. I have mom brain. Uh, I have been spinning for like three-ish years. 
<laughs> I started when I was pregnant with my second daughter, so uh, that has literally all run together on me into one big blob. So I'm thinking like three-ish years, maybe a little bit more. Do I dye my own wool? Yes, I do. <laughs> I, uh, I do, I have, I dye some of my own stuff, and then my friend, Christina Mossad, who is like a wizard, she literally has like a PhD in uh, chemistry for the ones on my site that are like the crazy, oh, hold on, actually, I have, this is some of Christina's, that sneak peek is going to be on the new collection, so y'all have once again gotten to see it here first. She is amazing, so I do defer to her for things that are really awesome, but I do simple dyeing myself. My mom, who also is with Crafty Housewife Yarns, is a botanist, and she is dabbling with uh, natural dyes. So, we do uh, kind of a whole bunch of different dyeing, but I do dye uh, some, but I, I definitely am not ashamed to get somebody who knows what they're doing. That I have a four and a two year old, like I do not need that much permanent dye in my house as much as she has. So we all kind of uh, share the dyeing load. But anyhow, anybody else? Any more questions? If not, I'm gonna, I think that's it. But yeah, so I hope everybody had fun. I will come up with something hopefully more exciting next week. This was kind of, it snowed here. So like school, like thankfully, Hoping to have one. Yeah, no, no. Natural dyes, Renee, I feel you. Like, I'm waiting on mom to uh, jump on the bandwagon with that. Like, I bought her some books and had them sent to her house. And we, uh, spoiler alert, she is friends with somebody in Conway, South Carolina, who uh, does the natural indigo dyeing. So, like, the girls and I are wanting to take a field trip at some point this year, um, hopefully not too far off to go learn about indigo dyeing, and of course I'll do videos and everything for everybody. But uh, yeah, no, mom works at Root Green Gardens, is her day job when she's not making yarn. So, uh, you know, she totally like knows what's up with all the, uh, the natural plants, so I'm hoping she'll start getting on that here soon. But, uh, oh, the, yeah, natural dyed uh, Angora, that would be amazing. For those of you who do not know, uh, Renee, who is just on here, is Tailspun Farm, which is where we get our Angora fiber from, and you should go check it out, because it's, it's like the softest, it, it's so clean and so fluffy, and uh, Christina and I are kind of obsessed with it, so. Christina just got a new fancy uh, mad batter, I don't even know what this thing is, it's like the mother of all drum carters, apparently, so I, Renee, I know she's gonna be wanting some more Angora, because she's already talking about it, so, um. Yeah, no, mad bats to come, I suppose, so I can't wait to see what that's up to. Anyhow, I do need to go, but this has been fun. It, uh, yay, I know, right? I She's supposed to be making us a video. Like I said, she keeps talking about this mad batter, and I'm over here with, like, my little baby br brother drum carter that I've got. So, uh, like I said, it, it, I really, I've, that's what I so have enjoyed about this business, is, like, instead of just trying to be like, I'm just gonna do it all myself, like, it's fun to, you know, learn with other people and see other people are better at things that I'm not. So anyhow, that's it. I'll talk to y'all later and I hope everybody has a good night.